Well, praise the Lord officially. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody to stand all over this house. I want to read one verse of scripture to all of our, we like to say our mothers and our mother figures. We have a lot of mothers here today that are represented. Some are friends um, that have come with their children. Some are existing saints of this church. And of course, we could not make it without our mothers. We also could not make it without our mother figures. We need both of them here at the church today. And before we go any step further, I want to declare that, hey moms, you matter. Amen. You matter to this church. You matter to the system. You matter in the kingdom. Amen. And we celebrate you today and we thank God for each and every one of you. Here's the verse of scripture. It is in Isaiah. It is in uh, chapter 66 and is verse number 13. And it simply says this, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. I want you to think about that. The Lord references the way that he will take care of his children, the way that a mother takes care of her children. Very powerful scripture, very powerful illustration of a mother's love and a mother's necessity in her family's life. And we say here at the church today that you are so important and we celebrate. And I think it appropriate because the Bible dictates to us that we are to show honor to whom honor is due. And so every non-mother, non-mother figure, every male especially, every child, every student all over this place ought to put your hands together in appreciation for our mother. Praise God. I'd like to go before the Lord in prayer just for a second. We've had a, had a good start, had a little bit of an interruption, about a 30-minute delay, so forgive the fact that um, the Tulsa Power Company cannot service our church properly or whatever the, ta- the, the, the case may be. Um, obviously, we'll be taking up donations for a backup generator. You can see me after service for that. Uh, that way, we don't delay the process any further, but thank you for your patience. Uh, I've been a rough couple of weeks. Appreciate our sound crew, our media crew, our lighting, video. They're doing a great job trying to get us online as quick as possible. The service will not be online, obviously, just because it'd be impossible to try to preset that. I do our best to record it today and push that forward later if that's possible. But we're going to have a good time in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We've got a world-renowned evangelist that's going to be speaking to us here in just a matter of moments. The worship songs here today, the family, I'm telling you, I walked in from out in the hallway and and just was blessed. And I promise you, if you open your spirit up today, I asked the Lord specifically for no distractions. There's power in our prayer. But if from this point on, we felt a taste collectively of what I tasted individually, it is going to be a marvelous time in the Lord. And I am looking forward to it. Amen. So why don't we together, let's ask God. Let's ask God. We are going to celebrate our mothers. But I believe that the Lord will come down and counsel those that need to be counseled. We'll make whole those that need peace will be a father to those that may be broken. Amen. Will be a mighty God to those that need Him to work in their favor and will be a miraculous God as His hand moves in this place because He is wonderful. Those are the characteristics of His name and He was birthed, ladies and gentlemen, for us. Why don't we go before that mighty God today Jesus, in your name, I know it's been a unique start to this day, but 
right here at this moment as we celebrate our mothers. We want to glorify the name that is above them all. You, Jesus, are here in this house today. You are an ever-present help in trouble. We worship the name that is above them all. We glorify you collectively, Jesus. We're going to put our hands together. We're going to lift our voice together. We're going to magnify you together because you still sit upon the throne and we honor you. We love you. Put your hands together to the Lord as our worship team comes. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness. My fortress, over and over. I have a hope, found in your name. I have a strength.
house right now and give God worship. Grab yourself by your shirt collar and say, oh flesh, I will give you all of my breath. I don't care what you feel like doing. The king is in the house. In the book of Mark, you will find where God went to do a mighty work, but he couldn't do a mighty work. Why? Because of their unbelief. I choose to believe. How about you? I need him to do a mighty work in me. I need him to do a mighty work in my family. I can worship God alone in my kitchen. We've come together to worship him. Together. Now lift him up again. I love you. I worship. I believe. I choose to believe it's my voice and it's my choice. And I choose to give you worship. I choose to give you worship.
today. Sometimes you're the only cheerleader besides Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Listen. You said I believe it. You said it. Come on. And it's done. Listen. You said it. All right, Jesus. I believe it. Walk into it. You said it.
One more time. You said it. I believe. Because you said it. It is done. Why don't we lift our hands to him right now? You are the author. You said it. You are the finisher. So it's done. Oh, that is a biblical statement we just sang about and we rejoice right now in every promise, in every promise, in every promise. Amen. Because we know that the promises of God are what? They are yea, they are amen. It is done. Praise God. It is a joy. My wife is putting on her uh, microphone and uh, she's going to be ministering to us in just a moment. It is a joy to be able to uh, do life with somebody that is so passionate about the kingdom. And I say it not often enough. We're moving towards healing in your families and healing in your life and we want to see God move in you and we celebrate you and and you do such a great job of celebrating us I'm not saying that's not what I'm saying but what I'm saying is the majority of time that we communicate it's going to be focusing right on you and on the harvest and obviously it goes without saying it's it's about him but you get what I'm talking about but to have somebody that I know and my kids know those closest to her will understand that her passion lies in the kingdom of God. It's where her true passion lies. And she's passionate, nonetheless, about seemingly things that are of great significance. She can be passionate about things that seem like they are not quite as significant. She's just passionate. She's a very passionate person. But if you want to know what she's truly passionate about, then just take a few moments when you have the time and go look in a mirror because she's passionate about you. She thinks about you way more than I think about you. She prays for you. She fasts for you. She weeps for you. She absolutely loves the church today and its members. She's not just a fantastic worship leader. She's asked several times if she could resign. And I'm saying that in serious. You know, maybe it's time for me to move on. And um, not out of self-pity, but just, you know, every leader realizes they have a shelf life. Um, mine's like 20 minutes from now. And, uh, but um, every leader understands that the pass baton is so important, but just don't feel like the time's yet, so when that uh, verbal letter of re resignation comes along, I say no, and uh, because the church today needs, they need you in the position that you're in, um, but I'll tell you, I, I hold the title of lead pastor of this church, we believe that there are, that pastoral leadership is an office, five-fold ministry. And uh, although I might be the lead pastor, she, she co-pastors with me. Since the very beginning, when we were having service in a travel trailer on my in-law's property, and um, when we signed our incorporation letter in Panera Bread because we had no facility, when we struggled with no money, no people, endless vision, and no seemingly way of backing that up. We were together in this. So what I'm saying is, is open your heart to what this woman of God is going to communicate. She does not profess herself to be a preacher, but she's an excellent communicator. And she is worthy to stand behind this desk today and to speak into your life the way that Priscilla would speak into the life of a world changer, she will speak into the lives of 
the world changers that I see in this place today. Amen. I guarantee she has a word from the Lord. It'll be her unique way. You know that. I was making fun of her on our trip back from Hot Springs because I can. I, who knows what she's going to do, you know. Um, but she is such a great communicator. Amen. I think it's only um, right that we give a round of applause towards heaven for allowing such a woman to be in our lives as she comes in Jesus' name. Stop it. Stop it. Tell me more. Tell me more. You may be seated. I sure love you guys so much. I wasn't going to sing a song that I wrote, but I feel like you need to laugh. Don't you love to laugh? Brother Jason, could you put the piano in the, the monitor since I'm, I don't have our fancy in-ears in? But I, would, I do would like to, um, Preston, if you'd bring my mama up here. Sister Gwen, if you'd bring me those roses down there on the floor. So I'd like to honor my mom because without her, I wouldn't be here. Y'all would be sad. So I love you. <laughs> for five years, she prayed for a child. And, um, Finally, Raina's brother. <laughs> He's not even here to enjoy it. Raina's brother was born. And while he was yet just a couple of months old, maybe about four, mo four months old, three and a half months old, surprise. So I'm thankful for my mother, and I honor you today. The, the Bible says to honor your father and your mother, and your days will be long. So if you want to come out or go out of the world sooner, then don't honor them. <laughs> One way or the other, right? So um, I want to sing this song that I wrote. Well, my, my sons wrote it for me. So... I like to sing that this morning. Is that all right with y'all? It's a really serious song. So get your hankies out, you know. follow the Lord. Well, I'm not going to do it. He just told me not to do it. I've learned the hard way <laughs> to listen to him. I'm not going to take the hard way this morning. I'm going to move. Is that all right? I'm going to move on. I want to honor my husband for letting me be up here and for trusting me. I, I don't feel like I deserve to be here. And um, I honor you and I love the way that you love me. And I honor my three sons, Preston, Landon, and Jude. You are the light of my life, and um, it's an honor to be your mom. To my TCT family, I honor you and I love you. I'd like to honor all of our moms, all of the mentors, all of the leaders, all the women of influence today. I honor you. I also want to say Jesus sees and knows to all of you that have loved and all of you that have lost. He hears every cry and every sigh. He sees, he knows your pain. And he loves you. And I honor you. Happy Mother's Day to you all. I love you guys so very much. 
So last year, I, um, I chickened out to speak on Mother's Day because of the whole online thing and the whole camera thing. And I, I said, I can't do it. I can't. I know you guys think it, I don't mind being up here and being on camera, but I do not. I don't like it. Um, but I have a word from the Lord. And it's my duty to say it. And I told him, I was like, this is not a message. Everybody just take a deep breath. We're going to get out of here early. And I just have a challenge. I just want to encourage you this morning. It's, we're going to get out of here, but we're going to pray. We're going to pray together. And I just have a challenge. About a couple of weeks ago, the Lord woke me up. And... Um, in the middle of the night a couple of weeks ago, and he told me what to speak on. And I woke up out of a deep sleep, and all I could hear him saying was, war cry. I need a war cry. Make war. It's time for battle. I was like, so I got up and I went in the closet and I began to write. And so I know that I'm supposed to speak to you on um, a war cry. And if you're, if you're wondering if I just, you know, I've always been a fighter, Sister Amber. I'm going to show you some pictures really quick that no one's ever seen before. In case we're wondering what I looked like when I was younger, will it come up? <laughs> See, I've always been a fighter. Do the next one. <laughs> Those have never been seen before. And my kids think I'd just become crazy and, and, and a warrior just when I had them. But see, there's proof right there. I've always been a fighter. All right, I'm going to talk to you about a battle cry. A war cry is a cry used for a body of fighters. It's a shouted word or sound used in battle to give each other courage or to frighten their enemy. When fighting in close quarters combat, the posture which gives a warrior the best advantage is a necessary advantage. What better way to intimidate an enemy than throwing him off balance when it, with an aggressive auditory clash that makes him quake in his boots? Yelling as foreplay to a physical altercation is as old as war itself. Persian warriors had voices like an enraged elephant and voices like a drum beat. That's how they scared their enemies. It's now scientifically proven that screaming during physical activity increases energy and power and evidence throughout history shows it has a significant effect on both sides of a battle. With that in mind, here are history's most legendary battle cries. Here's a, I'm, I brought out one because the other ones I read, I'll just give it to you like it is. I didn't understand half of the, what it was talking about. It, it was, I can't read about something if I don't know what it's talking about, but this one caught my eye. This one caught my eye. The Rebel Yell. Does anybody remember the Rebel Yell? Union Army veteran and journalist Ambrose Bierce called it the ugliest sound that ever mortal ever heard. Even a mortal exhausted and unnerved by two days of hard fighting without sleep, without rest, without food, and without hope. Historian Shelby Foote said Union Shoulder who hurt Un any Union soldier who heard it and said it wasn't scared by it had probably never actually heard it. Confederate forces during the American Civil War let out this scream during engagements to unnerve the enemy and were even judged by their officers on how good the rebel yell was. It was like, was it last Sunday when um, I talked about the girl that just came forth and she just began to yell and shred the atmosphere? before worship came and just broke the atmosphere. There's something when somebody gets a war cry in their spirit. And the thing that he told me in the middle of the night was this. In these last days, I'm not talking to just mamas. I'm talking to mamas, daddies, teenagers, young people. In the last days, we're not going to make it without a battle cry, without a war cry. we got to keep the posture of a soldier. I can, do you guys feel it? Every day I feel there's just a, an awakening, a quickening, a, there's just a, there's, there's something in my spirit that's keeping me in a posture of, of not being relaxed. And I like to be relaxed, but in this last days, you can't relax in the spirit. You can't take a day off 
from having a battle cry. We won't make it if we don't have a battle cry, Brother Krebs. We have to have it in our spirit. We have to have the posture of a soldier ready for battle. You can't tell me that culture is not trying to kill our children. Culture is trying to kill the adults, everybody. It's trying to make you bend and do this and believe this and say this and think this. They, it, it takes God's promises and make them dirty. If you don't have a battle cry and your cry isn't louder than the culture's cry, culture is calling. Young people, don't answer it. Culture is screaming. Don't answer it. Mama's and daddy's culture is yelling. They're calling your phone three and four times a day. I beg you not to answer it. I beg you not to answer it. Your battle cry has to be louder than the world's cry. <laughs> Teenagers, young people are taking their own life why their mamas and daddies sleep. I want to address the enemy and his lies really quick. Because this is what he says. Nobody, hear, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Here's my answer. I don't care. Nobody wants to hear what you're passionate about. I don't care. You have nothing to say. I don't care. See, this is what he does. He speaks that things to, those things to all of us. And so our answers need to be, I don't care. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> our battle cry has to be the loudest cry. You know what? Maybe your battle cry looks like Hannah. Maybe this is what your battle cry looks like. Maybe there'll be no words. Oh, but it's loud. Maybe your battle cry will look like David, where he's just shouting. Maybe your battle cry will be like Esther. If I perish, I perish. It has to be louder because I'm telling you, it's trying to kill this next generation. We can't sit back and take a day off. Mamas and daddies, don't be letting stuff in that you have no business letting in because your kids have been in, underneath an umbrella and they won't know how to handle those spirits that come in. They've never had to fight them before. That's why it's so important for that battle cry. We can't be sleeping and having our heads underwater. You hear what I'm saying? We got to have a fight within us. We got to have a battle cry. In the book of Psalms 149, 6 through 9 says, Let the high praises of God be in their throats. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And a two edged sword in their hands. This is sharper than a two edged sword. I think I'll go with this. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the judgment written. This is the honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let me say it like this. God's high and holy praises fill their mouths. For their shouted praises are their weapons of war. These warring weapons will bring vengeance. That's why the enemy wants to shut your mouth. Because it is a warring weapon. If he can get you worn out and distracted and discouraged and take this mouth away from you, where you don't have your battle cry... Because it, you can wage war against the enemy. And we've been talking about this in prayer class. Prayer class, it's my voice. It's my choice. I have a choice to forgive, to not forgive. To love, to not love. To go to heaven, to go to hell. Proclaim this among the nations, Joel says in 3, 
chapter 3, verse 9. Prepare a war. Stir up the mighty men. Stir up the mighty women. Let all the men of war come near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and put your running hooks into spears. Let the weak say, hurry and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Bring down, O Lord, you mighty ones, you warriors. Let the nations be stirred into action and come up from the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge and punish all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, tread the grapes, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for the wickedness of the people is great. Do we have any mighty men, any mighty women here this morning that won't let anything dampen their war cry? We've got to have a battle cry. It has to be in there at all times. At all times, we have to be ready with that posture to fight. Be ready for that posture to intercede. Be ready for that posture because the enemy, the adversary, is trying his best to infiltrate. Is that a word? Ooh, that was a big one for me. He's trying to get in your mind. He's trying to get in your heart and tell you things don't matter. We've got to stay underneath the covering of the name of Jesus. I got to stay in a posture to fight. Deja, come here, baby girl. Come here. Come here. Do you know why that we have to stay in the posture to fight? The battle cry is all about the strength and power we have in Jesus. We have to stay in posture. Come here, baby girl. A couple of Sundays ago, she came up to me and she was speaking in tongues and she was crying. She said, I'm free. I said, what you free from? What were you free from? Hate? Hurt? Pain? <laughs> she said, he finally healed my body. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> if you need a reason to fight, here's one. We got to keep our battle cry to raise the babies. We got to stand in the gap and say, <laughs> I know you're tired and you're exhausted, but hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have to stay in this posture for them and for our children and for the next generation. If we don't, who will? Hey, Mama Ray. I'm struggling with fear today, baby. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They need to hear us. We got to train them. We got to speak life into them. Into each other. We can't do this on our own. We got to stay prepared for battle through discipline, through training and exercise. We've got to we've got to stay. You know, sometimes before your victory, you'll get kicked right in the gut. So you're like, you're on your way to victory. You're like on the struggle street. And right before, victory's right ahead. You can see it. Like there's a turn. So you're on struggle street and your victory is right ahead. You can see that, the, you know, the street signs say victory. And you get punched right in the gut. And Daddy, I remember one time. I had my spurs on and my wranglers. This is before Christ. And um, I was doing my thing, you know, rodeo, and then that's not a sin. Don't take it. That's not what I meant. Anyway, back to the subject here. Had my spurs on and my wranglers, and I was walking behind Dolly. Do you remember this? And I was, about, I was on my way to my victory, to my good probably 17-second barrel racing. Maybe 17 seconds, you think? Maybe 19 
What do you think it was? 17 or 19? About 17 seconds. I was about to be on my way to my victory. Barrel racing. And I walked behind her and my spur got caught in my, my jeans. And I fell right behind her. Scared her to death. She just kicked me right in the stomach. And I got up. The breath was out of me. And my daddy rubbed me in the back. He said, you're all right, girl. Get up. I got up, and I went on to my victory. Some, we got to say that when, 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 our, when our fellow brother or our sister gets kicked in the gut, and you, can see, and you know that they're on the way to your victory, you need to say, it's all right, baby, get up, and just dust yourself off. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then sometimes, Elijah... Right after a victory, Jezebel going to try to come kill you. Right after that victory, you're on that high, and then Jezebel going to be after you. There's things that Elijah's got to do afterwards. He's got like three things he's got to do afterwards, and here he is scared. Matter of fact, he is so scared, the Lord don't even know where he's at. He says, Elijah, what are you doing? He's in a, hiding in a cave after a victory. Elijah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to go anoint Elisha. You got to go do something with the king. You, you got stuff you got to do. We need somebody to sing a battle cry when we're hiding in the caves. When we're like Joseph and we, get to, we have to go into these pits, we need a pit crew. pull us out and to pray and to honor say honor the Lord through this time Paul says a final word be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power Ephesians 6 10 said Paul says finally brethren which means we are in this together I got your back you're not alone we are soldiers together we fight side by side. One last story and I'm done and I'm going to finish reading Ephesians chapter 6. But a couple of years back, we went, I went on a, a terrible hike. I love this word, don't you? And I was in so much pain and people have died on this hike. I think, I don't know if I've talked about it before, but it's angels landing. People have died. Look it up. I'm not exaggerating. But it was Kobe's idea that we go on this hike. And I was so mad at him. And I mean, I was so mad I didn't say a word. Now, if, if I don't talk to you, I'm mad. But I've never done that with y'all. But anyways, I was so mad at him. Sometimes we get mad at each other. I know, young, I know. Family do that. They get mad at each other. Then you get glad. I was so mad that he picked this hike, and it, it, it was, I was, my, everything was on fire. Let me just put it to you that way. I thought I was going to die. I was so mad. We're hiking up there. We had Jude, and he was like five years old at this time, and I gritted my teeth at my husband, and I said, if my kids die on this hike, I'm never going to forgive you. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Literally, he, he could just fell off and died, and I was so mad. Every now and then, Kobe would come back to where I was at. He'd say, we're almost there. I was like, I'm going to choke him. If he comes back here and tells me we're almost there again, I'm going to choke him. Sometimes we feel like that with our brothers and sisters in Christ. They're telling me I'm almost there. It don't feel like I'm almost there. It don't seem like I'm almost there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I remember I was on the uh, halfway up, and I could hear laughter. And all this stuff going on cause from the people that had made it to the top already. And they were fixing to go on to the, to the worst part of the hike. And uh, I, I could hear it, hear them laughing. And I would stop and I'd listen and I'd, I'd feel encouraged, you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, people started coming down. All the people that started coming down, I started asking them, was it worth it? The next person would come down. I was like, is it worth it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so beautiful up there. Next person would come down. I'm like, is it worth it? 
Oh, it's so pretty. Is it worth it? Oh, just a little bit longer. Is it worth it? Just a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to keep a battle cry in our spirit. We can't lose our children. We can't lose our families. We can't sleep. We can't put our heads in the sand. We've got to stay awake. Stand with me. I'd like for the team to come back. So we make it with discipline, with training, with exercise. We've been talking about how do you do that? Through prayer, through praise, through the word, through prayer, through worship, and praise and the word, through prayer, through worship, through praise and the word, and we exercise and we grow and we get stronger, right? We put on the whole armor of God of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil we're not fighting against flesh and blood and enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world against evil spirits in the heavenly places therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil armor put on his word then after the battle you will still be standing firm Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from good news. That's shoes of fire. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. I beg you this morning to stay alert. I beg you this morning, young people, don't answer. Don't answer culture. Don't answer the phone. It's calling, it's pulling more than ever before the call to destruction. is so strong because the enemy knows, the adversary knows he doesn't have much time he please hear the word of God. We got to have a battle cry in our spirits at all times. Please don't take a day off from praying in the spirit. He's trying to steal your marriages. He's trying to steal your children. He's trying to steal your heart. If he can get your heart, he has you. If he can get your love and revelations, Jesus is talking to the church of Ephesus, right? If I get it wrong, who cares? But he's saying, I have something against you. You forgot your first love. You look pretty on the outside. You've been faithful. You can tell when somebody's fake and that's great. You look great come to church, great, you look so together, but I have this one thing against you, you forgot your first love, and then you forgot to love one another, if you listen closely, you can hear the cries, people are crying out. People are tired of the fight. People need something real. People need to hear a battle cry. When you walk by, when you walk by somebody out in public, they should be able to hear this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 